update on our home garden situation here and let you all know, as you can see, things have really taken off since we were out here last and we started planting some of our transplants and our seeds. So um, there has been uh, some successes and some problems that I want to share with you all. Um, unfortunately, whenever you're gardening, you can't control 100% of the environment all of the time. And so what you're seeing on our tomatoes, um, and it's often a problem around April through June, is um, some sort of herbicide drift. And so if you take a look at these tomatoes, you can see that the um, petiole or the stem to the leaf is sort of twisting. There's some cupping on the leaves and things like that. Um, now we are getting some flowers and we do have a few green tomatoes on here. So um, we'll kind of see if these will grow out of it. Um, they might, we've got a long season to go. So I'm gonna keep an eye on our tomatoes. Now we do know that's herbicide damage because we're seeing it not just on tomatoes, but on some of the other plants. Tomatoes are one of the most susceptible um, to herbicide drift. And again, this can happen in neighborhoods anywhere. Um, 2,4-D is one of the common herbicides that tends to drift more than some of the others. Uh, and dicamba as well is, is one. Um, but you see a little bit on the peppers here. Um, we've got a little bit of the, the leaves are kind of thickened a little bit and they're kind of stretched and twisted. Not so bad on the peppers. A um, little bit on some cosmos seeds that I threw out here. I like to incorporate just a few flowers in my vegetable garden so I've done that here. Um, but I think they'll be fine. They're not too much of a concern. We've got some Armenian yard long cucumbers growing on the north side here of our pepper or excuse me of our tomato trellis. They're starting to flower, but we don't have any cucumbers on those just yet. If we go down here a little ways, I've got some more tomatoes, and these are some of our bigger tomatoes. Um, and I want to point out what I thought was kind of one that was uh, slow to grow and it was shorter. It actually um, fared better uh, from that herbicide damage, so it looks like it's going to be fine. You can see the others that were a little bit larger uh, got hit a little bit more. And then some critter came in and decided to take a bite out of some of those on the end there. So I'm not sure what it was. Uh, got a couple armadillos and things like that around here. Um, but usually they're looking for grubs. So you might remember we planted some black beauty uh, a zucchini here. Um, and this is what has come. So far, knock on wood, we don't have any squash bugs just yet, but we're continuing to scout for those by turning over any of the leaves, especially the lower leaves. You'll start to see um, a cluster of eggs, um, or you might just see some damage, but we're on the lookout for that, but so far we have not seen any. Now you can see that I planted these earlier than I planted the yellow squash. So these are actually much further along. Um, and if you come down here, I want to show you the difference between some of the flowers. We've talked about this before, but if you're in a home garden situation and you're new to this, you might see different types of flowers and be wondering why you're not getting fruit yet. So right here, this flower is a male flower. Um, you can see that it has a nice smooth stem that goes up to the flower here. Now you can utilize these. These are great for um, fried squash blossoms if you want to. Um, but behind us, let's see if I can find a female. The females are the ones that are going to have swollen uh, ovaries below the flower buds. So actually here's one right here that's not yet bloomed that's will bloom. You can see that bud, but do you see how that's kind of a swollen area below that? So that will eventually, once it's pollinated um, by the bees and stuff, that will develop into what will be your zucchini squash. So right here we've got one that is starting to develop into that squash. You can see it's still blooming. Um, down here we've had one that will continue to grow and develop. So that's, that might be why if you're seeing these, the male flowers tend to come on before the female flowers. So if you're seeing those flowers and wondering why you're not getting fruit yet, that might be, you might take a look and see if they're male flowers that are coming on. A lot of times the male flowers will come on to get those pollinators um, excited to start visiting that plant. Now you might remember we planted some uh, 
asparagus. We planted six rhizomes of asparagus. We planted three over here, which I also just see to some bachelor buttons. Um, they're doing well, they're all coming up. Over here we've got three more. You can see the asparagus are coming up. We're not really doing anything to them right now. We're just letting them grow. Um, asparagus harvesting season is over. Um, the first year when you plant them, you don't wanna harvest anything anyway. We're just really trying to get that root to develop. So we want that fern to grow and photosynthesize to really get a larger root system. Now in front of us here, we have some potatoes. Again, a member of the Solanaceae family. Um, and you can see we've got some, again, herbicide damage done to them with the twisting of the leaves. They're very coarse. So um, I don't have anything really to lose by letting them stay and see if they grow out. We'll see what we can harvest. It's probably going to um, affect uh, the number of potatoes and the size of potatoes I get, but we're going to go ahead and keep them in here and, and uh, watch them and harvest them in June and see what they look like. Another plant that's also in the Solanaceae family and is very sensitive to uh, herbicide damage is the eggplant, and you can see that there's some cupping that's happening on those leaves. So on the north side of our potatoes here, um, I planted a few, uh, another squash. This is a bossa nova squash, um, which is an All-America selection. Um, you can see that it's kind of got a unique pattern to it. I've already been able to harvest a couple off of these, and that's likely because we started this as a transplant um, and put it straight out in the garden. The others I started as seed, so they took a little bit longer. So I'm already getting fruit off of something that was a transplant in the garden versus a seed. So, um, but even though squash is very easy to start from seed. Of all the squash plants that we started from seed, um, our yellow straight neck, we actually planted a couple of weeks later than our black beauty uh, zucchinis. And so you can see that these yellow squash are a little bit smaller still, again, because they're a little bit delayed in how long they've been in the ground, but we are starting to get some fruit on it as well. Now, over here we have um, our trellis that we built. And we've got several cucumbers um, that I've kind of been training up on this a little bit. Uh, we've got a lot of flowers coming on and several cucumbers to go ahead and start picking. Um, you know, picking them depending on your, what you're going to do with them. If you're going to pickle them, you might want them smaller. If you're going to use them for slicing, you might want them a little bit bigger. So we have several uh, cucumbers in here. Um, and we'll have plenty more as we go through the summer months. Now just on the other side, it's time to harvest our onions also. So you can see our onions have sort of fallen over here. We do get a fair bit of wind and basically it's time to harvest these. Um, we've got both red and uh, yellow in here. I think maybe some whites is also. I like to harvest this. You're gonna wanna kind of brush off as much of the dirt as possible. And then I like to put them in these web trays just to kind of let them dry out a bit. So once I get these onions pulled, this also might be another place that I can do some more succession planting on my squash. So in case we do get some squash bugs coming in, I'll have some new plants ready to go. So really that's what's going on in a home garden um, in Oklahoma in May to June. You might see some uh, herbicide drift, but you should be harvesting your onions and starting to see some green tomatoes come on. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.